to the uh you've arrived at your destination oh maybe we fucked up because uh, this is not the uh, wright brothers memorial this is a uh What's shopping that? center <laughs> okay oh uh, maybe it's back there with that flag i don't know oh, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Because the, the address, okay, well, the address we got from the actual uh, Wright Brothers website. Hmm. Okay, we'll find it. They can fly a plane, we can drive a car. So now we're going to the other place, and it's about 30 minutes from here. It's about 17 miles. So uh, it's not really a fuck up. It's just uh, whatever, two addresses. And this is, uh, this is part of the adventure. You know, things aren't planned, you know. Expect the unexpected. Okay, well, are we here? Fort Turn Rally left visit. on National Park Drive. Yeah, left here. Okay. It's funny because they're not. There's no. Look, uh, look, at, look at the. Look at the beautiful. Oh my God! Look at the. In 500 feet, you arrive at 1401 National Park Drive. <laughs> I don't see any reference to the Wright brothers. So. Okay, well, we did find a sign, and it looks like we made it to the right place. You know, we get a little lost. We have GPS and all the modern wonders of the world. I just imagine sailors with, uh, you know, navigating with, with the stars. It's crazy. So here we are, Outer Banks Group headquarters, uh, Wright Brothers National Memorial. So now we have to just find the memorial, and, uh, and there's also some banks that they flew the plane, so we'd like to see those. Uh, all right. So we met these two over here from hey. Texas because we're lost at the Wright Brother Memorial. It's not here apparently. It's the second address. We have to go back to the thir first address. So these two lovely people hey, from Texas, Austin, Rhode Island. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Eric. Uh huh. Sarah. Sarah. Uh -huh. And they're uh, they're from Austin. So if we drive through Austin, we might hook up with them. So it's always nice meeting random people. Yeah. See Randomness. You and you are. I'm. Uh, <laughs> You're my I'm travel buddy. <laughs> I forgot. All right, guys. I'm your chauffeur. <laughs> And so we just finished saying goodbye, and now we ended up going to the same place. The, that's the, <laughs> that awkward feeling when that happens. <laughs> okay, now they left for good. You know, when you, when you leave your friends at night and you say goodbye outside the restaurant, and then you all walk to the same place because your car's in the same direction? That was the awkwardness of it all. Okay, we're going into the Museum of the Lost Colony. Oh. Returning three years later to check of the men, women, and children he left, had left, John White found that the members of England's first, col first colony in first America had vanished. had vanished. Well, the legend is, well, the story is, is that when they went back to, to see the colonists, they were gone. And they had no clue what happened to them. They were supposed to colonize the area or live, and about 100 people, 120 people. And that's it. So the lost colony, I don't have much information on it. I just stumbled across it, but you can free, feel free to look it up. I like this. Imagine getting the casting call for that to play uh, 15th century colonialist, Shakespeare in English, and then nobody sees your face because you're a silhouette. Okay, well, this is kind of the wrong place, but we did meet two wonderful people from Austin that uh, we might hook up with later. So it wasn't a total failure of a drive because they, you know, they're great people and they gave us some great travel tips. We, and uh, we got to see the Lost Colony Museum, so that was an unexpected uh, little stop. So now we're going back to the first place that we thought was the wrong place. And uh, yeah, that's it. The adventure continues. Nothing's planned. Nothing planned, nothing gained. All right, so we finally made it. Uh, it's the craziest thing because it was exactly back to the first place we had stopped. And now it's starting to rain, but uh, we're going in. First to the museum, then to the monument. Okay, just take a little tour of the museum. A little bit of the history. On December 17th, 1903, the Wright brothers usher in the age of modern aviation with four short flights. At a time when most people thought flying was just a fantasy, they show the world that anything is possible. Anything 
as possible. From dream to reality. Uh, their father gave them a toy bat. They tossed it in the air and instead of falling on the floor, it flew across the room. It was, it was a toy bat that looked like that. And that's what gave them the inspiration when they were uh, 11 and 7. So that little tiny seed, looking at it, stayed with them. And that's, uh, that's indicative of a lot of things in life. So sometimes you never know where inspiration hits you. And everything is a lesson. Everything, as mundane as it sounds, as mundane as it sounds, everything you learn could be a seed of inspiration at a future time. So and this is uh, some of their actual tools that they've used. Their actual tools. Wow. Remember that. When I see it, every time I get on a plane, like, it all started from this. These little simple tools. Incredible. Like, really, being here is incredible. And this is it. On the morning of December 17, 1903, they check everything. He steps on the flyer, Orville, and he flies for 12 seconds and 120 feet. For the first time in history, when most people thought flying was just a fantasy, the brothers proved that anything is possible. So now here is a replica of the plane, because I believe the original one is in uh, Washington, the Air and Space Museum. But uh, this is what it looked like. These are copies of their patents. Yeah, just came out of the museum and now we're headed towards the monument, right up there. So what's interesting is this is the, uh, the dune, the bank, they, they, they flew their gliders off and this is when they, they did all their tests. And that's why they came to this place. And what's interesting is here you see the markers of every distance of each flight. So um, when they flew from there, this was the distance of the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one of that day. And it's just pretty incredible standing at this place. Because I did a book report on these guys when I was younger, and it was just, it always marveled me. Airplanes always amazed me. And uh, so to be here actually at their flight path, the flight path they took from there to there. Wow. Wow. So this is this is pretty incredible. So what you're gonna see here is that's where they took off from, right up there where the monuments built. And that's the flight path they took. And this is how far they came. And this was the end of the first flight that day, 12 seconds. December 17, 1903. And then the rest of the experiments. Wow, just stand here for a second. This is like, <laughs> this is it. The planes we history. took, it's incredible. We're standing on history. Yeah. On a plot of history. And they had no clue. This guy got in this flying machine and he just took a chance on his life. Yeah, yeah. He took a chance with his life. I just believed in it so much. Anyways, these stories touch me very much because they inspire me. Because it's just dedication from someone that'll spend years of their life thinking they're failures and keep going and going and spending millions, millions, I don't know at the time how much they had spent, but thousands of their dollars at their time going broke. He often said that they're going broke and they pers persisted in their dream. And uh, yeah, and here we are. We have airplanes. It's starting to rain and we're almost there at the monument at the top where they took off. We didn't come this far to stop right now, so let the rain fall, get to the top. Double shower. <laughs> Double shower. It's the, it's the I afternoon shower. <laughs> I took a shower in the morning, now I'm taking a shower in the afternoon. I was gonna take a shower later, but fuck it. Okay, so we split up with Nick because the there's two paths and they both go, one goes left, one goes right. So Nick's gone by the right side, I've gone by the left. 
and we just want to see who gets up there first. Be up here. I'm already up here. I wonder where Nick went. Whew, that's, that's quite steep. Okay. It started here and it went all the way down there. Wow, to stand on this spot. I've been looking for you. Yeah, I'll take a picture. Ah, ah quite a quite a quite a walk up, huh? That's amazing. Wow. Pretty cool. So we're leaving the museum and Nick was kind enough. He got two replica planes on the first flight. One for George, one for me. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Appreciate it. My gift to George. Okay, let me see if this works. Hold on. <laughs> we just ah. And this is it. This museum and this visit's done. A little hectic to get here, but uh, it was a busy day today. We uh, started with the most primitive form of transportation, uh, the horse, and ended with the most advanced form of transportation, the airplane. And uh, pretty incredible day. And uh, no words, just, uh, just that's it. A full day like this, adventure and inspiration, and you can't ask for anything more. So uh, that's it. Thank you and good night. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Can we get some uh, ketchup? Is there uh, ketchup here? Okay, Can we get some ketchup? Thank you. All right, so uh, I lied. So we decided to come to a place called Yellow Submarine. It's got uh, it's got that old diner look to it, and with a whole bunch of Beatles memorabilia. So we ordered the uh, Philly cheesesteak, but the Yellow Submarine. And let's just see. Thank you, you're the best. Thank you very much. So, take a bite out of that. Mm, very good. Eh? Very good. Mm. So, mm, that's really good. It's not too greasy, not too sloppy. It's amazing. And that's it. So, now the day's over. Final meal of the day. The only meal of the day. It's like 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock actually. Only meal of the day. And that's it. So, have a pleasant tomorrow.